Kare Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. Today we are going to do something different. Flowers always seem to be difficult to paint, but this one will give you a lot of satisfaction. We will focus on negative painting, leaving white spaces for highlights, lifting out pigment to lighten an area or to emphasize an area, and using wet on wet and wet on dry technique. We will also show you how to paint a metal container and how to add a background at the end. The materials used are listed in the description below. This painting was done on Saunders Waterfit 100% cotton cold pressed paper. Only one brush is needed. In this case a silver black velvet number 8 round was used. This size brush is ideal for the painting, but you might want to use a bigger brush for wetting the background later. The medium sized brush will help you to keep your painting relatively loose. If you use a smaller brush, it might lead you to work too tight and too detailed. A smaller brush also does not hold so much water and pigment, so you would have to reload the brush more often. This will cause your painted area to dry while you reload and you might end up with unwanted hard lines or blooms. For this type of painting, a brush with a sharp point like this silver is ideal. It will allow you to get into all the little nooks and crannies with ease. On the palette, we have Cerulean Blue, Raw Sienna, a light green mix of cerulean and raw sienna which gives you a beautiful earthy soft bluish green french ultramarine burnt sienna a gray mix of french ultramarine and burnt sienna quinacridone gold and a dark green mix of french ultramarine and quin gold then we have scarlet lake which is a warm red and carmine which is a cooler red some people like to work straight from the palette, but that could be a bit dicey as you might have your pigment too strong or too weak. If you are a beginner, it is better to premix your colors and test them on a swatch card to ensure that they have the color combination you need. Today we paint in portrait mode. The paper, like I said, is Saunders Waterfit, which is taped with a masking tape to prevent leakage and to create a neat border. Before you start drawing, you can use a spray bottle to wet the paints on your palette. This will help to activate the pigments and allow you to get a smoother mix. We do recommend that you use an inexpensive brush to transfer your selected pigments to your mixing palette. This will help to preserve your higher quality brushes as some of the pigments are more difficult to activate and this might damage your good brushes. Take your time and draw the sketch before you start painting. Make clear lines which are easily visible. You will cover the pencil lines with a paint. It is useful to draw the sketch on a copy paper first to make sure that you have your perspectives and composition in place. Note that the vase is not smack in the middle of the page. It is slightly off center and the main flower balances the composition to the right. Okay, so we are ready to paint. The light source is coming from the left. So always keep that in mind when you work. Use your brush to wet the vase. We are going to start with raw sienna on the left of the vase because your light is coming from the left so you will have warmer lighter colors on that side use a bit of water to spread the paint and then add some of the green cerulean raw sienna mix Thank you. 
This is a metal container, so you will have some reflections showing. Spread the mix a bit and allow the colors to blend. Avoid making definite stripes or lines. The transitions should be smooth and soft. Don't rinse your brush. Just add a thin line of cerulean. Blend it lightly with the tip of the brush. The colors on your brush will mix and fuse to create an interesting blend of yellows, greens and blues. Once you get to the middle of the vase, leave a thin white gap for the light reflection. Then add a little bit of the cerulean mix. Blend some raw sienna into the mix and then add some French ultramarine. You are now moving to the shadow side of the vase, so your colors will be cooler and darker. Add a touch of the carmine to the ultramarine to diffuse the starkness of the blue and to soften the shadow a bit. Because your paper is wet, the paint will make spidery lines. Use the tip of the brush to gently blend the spider webs into a smooth transition. Add a very thin line of the dark grey French mix, um, French and burnt sienna mix, to form the extreme shadow side. To emphasize the shape of the vase, you can add a line of French ultramarine in the middle. Don't use too much though, just enough to give a bit of a deeper color and then blend it into the surrounding colors. Rinse the brush thoroughly and pat it onto a paper towel to get rid of the excess water. Then use the brush to lift out some highlights on the container. Wipe the brush on the towel to get rid of the pigment and then lift out some more. Enhance the shadow side with a bit more of the dark paint and again blend it into the surrounding areas. Add the cast shadow of the cloth onto the vase with a dark mix while it is still damp. Be very careful here though not to make your pigment too wet as it will form blooms or it can spread too much which will make the shadow too large in proportion. Now we move on to the cloth. Keep in mind that the vase is still very wet. Okay, so rinse your brush thoroughly and wet the cloth area with a clean brush. Leave a thin dry line at the top of the cloth where it touches the vase so that it does not bleed into the vase. You can wet the cloth in patches to give a more interesting texture. Add some of the dark mix to the bottom edge of the cloth for the shadow line. 
You can design your own pattern on the cloth by adding the blues and a touch of red to the cloth. Leave plenty of white spaces to resemble a white cloth with patterns on it. The blues and red will harmonize with the vase and the flower. You can add a few more shadow lines to the vase and the cloth for emphasis.
Wet an area to the right of the vase for the cast shadow. The shadow is darkest closer to the vase and will fade out as you move to the right. Dab in some of the dark mix close to the vase and allow it to spread. You can use the brush to help the paint spread a bit. Add some French ultramarine to make the shadow cooler. To create a softer edge to the shadow, you can wet the outline with clean water and allow the paint to spread again. Don't use too much water so that your shadow does not spread too much and allow the watercolor to do its thing. Don't fiddle too much and don't always try to manipulate the paint. Let it flow naturally. You can now allow the painting to dry. Next, we are going to start with the flower. Use clean water and wet the entire front petal. The front petal is closest to the viewer, so the color on it will be a touch warmer than those at the back. This will help to create depth. Use the tip of the brush and dab in a touch of quin gold in the bottom and top left of the petal. Remember your light comes from the left, so this part of the petal will be lighter. You will build all the colors and tones later on. Without rinsing the brush, pick up some of the scarlet lake and gently dab it onto the petal. Blend it very lightly with the tip of the brush. The quin gold will give the red more depth. Now add some carmine to the right of the petal. You can also use rose madder or alizarin crimson. Any cooler red will do as this is the shadow side of the petal. To deepen the shadows under the curve of the petal, you can add a touch of the dark mix. Keep it very light though. Remember that this petal is very wet, so be gentle and use only the tip of the brush. You can layer the colors to deepen the red and to give the petal some texture.
While the petal is drying, you can now move on to the stems. Use the greens and blues on the palette to color the stems. Take care when you draw the stem on the flower as it might bleed into the petal. Leave a tiny white gap if you are worried that it will bleed. You can always close the gap later. When drawing the stems, avoid making one solid line. Remember that there is a play of light and shadow on the stems. By using short broken strokes, you will capture these light and dark areas and will give the stem a more natural look. Add a thin line of the dark green to the shadow side of each of the stems. You can also dab in touches of burnt sienna to give a bit of warmth. Follow the same process with the other stems, but try to vary the amount of light and dark green. The stems shouldn't all have a uniform color. Try to create variety by adding touches of Gwyn Gold or burnt sienna. Use the greens and some quin gold for the buds. Leave some tiny white gaps for light reflections. Add a dab of scarlet to the tip of the bud. Rinse the brush, pat it dry and then gently blend the color into the bud. Add a tiny bit of dark mix for definition. If you are right-handed, it is always better to start painting from the left as you might press with your hand on a wet area and ruin your painting. Remember when you paint the stems to leave some white patches for the light reflection.
The buds on the left should be slightly lighter with a touch more quin gold as they are on the light side of the painting. The same principle applies to the leaves. Use more yellow on the left of each leaf and add some more dark green to the right, still leaving a few white patches to help shape the leaf. The two leaves in front are slightly more defined than the one at the back as they are closer to the viewer.
The petal is dry now and we can start to paint the top petals. Wet the petal on the left. Add quin gold on the left of the petal with the tip of the brush. Then rinse the brush and pick up some scarlet and drip it lightly into the yellow. Then you can add some carmine to the right of the petal, to the shadow side. Add some of the dark to the heart of the petal. The poppy has a beautiful dark base. Add a bit of the dark to the top of the petal for texture and variation. Add water to the next petal. These petals touch each other, so it's no big deal if the paint flows over to the next one. You can use the same brush, no need to rinse it. Add scarlet and carmine to the petal. To resemble the fold of the petal at the top right, you can make the top part a little bit lighter. Add some dark paint to the heart here as well. Tip it in very, very lightly and allow it to spread by itself. Here you can also add touches of dark to the edges of the petal.
While it dries a bit, you can add some more shadow to the fold of the bottom petal. Wet the petal again a little bit and add some more red to enhance the depth of the color. Now you can allow the painting to dry again. You can use a hair dryer to speed up the process or you can let it dry naturally. Next you can add another layer of green to the leaves. The layers will darken the leaves and give more texture and depth. Use some of the dark grey paint to add the shadow inside the vase. Add a slight shadow line to the stems again, just to bring more definition to the stems. Then add the tiny hairs on the stems. Be very careful here not to fall into a pattern. Try to add the hairs randomly.
wet the foreground up to the bottom third of the paper and then add some burnt sienna. Add a few darker lines for texture. You can add another layer of red to the petals to deepen the red. Again, the layers help to sharpen the color and to give it more prominence.
If you feel that there are areas that are too dark, you can wet these areas slightly with a clean brush and then dab the paint out with a paper towel. Add a touch of the blue-green to the center of the flower. Add a few dots of Quin Gold to the light side of each petal and another layer of red. To define the cloth some more, you can add a broken line of dark paint to the bottom edge of the cloth. You can also enhance the cast shadow from the vase if you feel it needs more depth. You can add some dark lines to define the bud some a bit more, but don't overdo it. Let everything dry properly. Now it's time to do the background. Wet the background and then use some of the blue green and some of the raw sienna and paint in longer vertical lines. Use the water to blend the paint and create smooth transitions. The background resembles wallpaper and this is reflected in the metal vase.
Finally, we are going to add some white gouache to draw the stamens of the flower and to add some more light here and there to put some finishing touches on your composition. But again, please don't fiddle too much. If you think it needs something more, then just stop. It is quite easy to destroy your beautiful painting by adding just one more thing. Put down your brush as soon as you find that you see mistakes or places where you can make it better. That's usually when you start overdoing and overworking your painting. So, in this workshop, you have learned how to use blues, yellows and darks to create a metal container. You have also learned how to use yellow to enhance the red in a flower. We reminded you to keep the direction of the light in mind and how to add a background after you've painted your object. We hope that you found the teaching useful. Please leave us a review in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you soon. Vaya con Dios.